I was telling Tucker that in my family, we don't blow on the candles, so we try to. That's awesome. Hi, bakers. I'm Kai. I'm the recipe editor at King Arthur Baking Company, and I'm so excited to be talking about birthday cake today. It's one of my absolute favorite things to bake, and today we're using our classic birthday cake recipe, which was our recipe of the year for 2019. And there's a bunch of tips and tricks that make this recipe really fail-proof, and you end up with this gorgeous birthday cake that's flat and even. It's got vanilla layers, chocolate frosting. It's so good. So I'm going to teach you these tips, and you can apply it to whatever birthday cake recipe you make. So King Arthur all-purpose flour is kind of the sweet spot between having just enough strength to hold all the fat and the sugar in the cake layers without being too chewy. Like you don't want a bready, chewy cake, but you also don't want your cake to just kind of sink or not have strength. So I'm measuring out 240 grams of all-purpose flour. Adding my baking powder and my salt all together. So put your dry ingredients aside. Now we're going to go to the mixer and you should be fitted with the whisk attachment because we're going to beat a whole lot of air into the wet ingredients. So we're adding four eggs, four large eggs, they're room temperature. We're adding our sugar, obviously, which adds sweetness and some structure when it's beaten with the eggs. And some vanilla extract for flavor, because the cake layers, the prominent flavor is vanilla, like that classic yellow box cake, but even better because you're using real vanilla extract. You can add almond extract if you want to for a little bit more of a complex flavor. I'm just going for straight vanilla here. So we're gonna beat this for about two minutes, and then we'll check and see what it looks like. We're beating until it turns into what's called ribbon stage. And ribbon stage is when the mixture is beaten and has so much air in it that it will fall from the whisk in a ribbon and it actually will dissolve back into the batter and you can kind of see it dissolve and it should look like a ribbon. And that allows you to get really beautiful cake layers that rise high and have a great structure. So I'm gonna turn this up and let it whisk for about two minutes. We'll check it out then. Okay. So another way that you can tell when your batter has reached ribbon stage is the color. It should lighten in color. It should also increase in volume. But the most important test to tell if you've reached ribbon stage is you can grab your spatula or your whisk and you should be able to see the trail of the batter kind of stay on top and then dissolve in for a couple seconds. The kind of cake that we're making is a hot milk cake, which is a sponge cake. And for any kind of sponge cake, it's really important to make sure that your eggs are properly beaten because sponge cakes get their rise and their texture from this step of beating the eggs properly. So that's why ribbon stage is so important. And this ensures that we have a really fluffy base. So we're gonna get a really wonderful texture. We're going to switch to the paddle attachment and add the dry ingredients, but before I do that, I'm just going to scrape down the sides of the bowl to make sure that all of the egg and the sugar, everything is fully incorporated. So this is the whisk dry ingredients. It all goes in at once. And then you want to just stir it until it's combined. And then we'll do another scraping to make sure that there's no sticky spots. I'm going to stop and scrape down the sides of the bowl. This seems like a really simple step and like you could just skip it, but it's so worth taking the 10 seconds to make sure you get the bottom of the bowl and the sides because that will ensure that the cake layers don't have any pockets of sugar or leavener or anything that's not incorporated. So really worth doing. I'm always tempted to skip it. Don't skip it. Beating just a little bit more and then this is fully incorporated. So we are now ready to make the hot milk mixture that is really the star of this cake. So I'm going to add the milk to the pot on the stove and we are going to bring it to a simmer. Hot milk cakes are really tender, super moist, and just really well loved. And the science behind why it makes such a great cake is because you bring the milk to a simmer, you add your fat, in this case it is butter and oil, and then we add it to the dry ingredients. 
it is going to coat the flour in fat, which means that you get a really tender texture and there's not as much gluten formation. And the fact that the mixture is pretty warm also means that the sugar will dissolve, so you'll get a really smooth mouthfeel. A watch pot never boils, so maybe I should just look over here. Okay, we have reached a simmer. We are now going to add the butter and the oil to the hot milk. So we're almost there. So our hot milk mixture is fully combined. The butter is melted, the oil is in there too. Our batter is mixed. And now is the exciting part. We are going to add the hot milk mixture to the batter while it's mixing on low. And while I'm adding it, you'll see that it starts to become more liquidy. And the batter might be a little bit more liquidy than you're used to with an average cake, but that's okay. That's the proper consistency for a hot milk cake. So just mix the batter until combined, and then again, get in there with your spatula and scrape it down. To ensure that this cake does not stick to the pan, I'm going to line it with a parchment paper round. If you don't have parchment paper rounds, you can just trace this pan on a sheet of parchment and then cut it to size. But this is really nice to know that your cake is not going to get stuck. Okay, there is exactly the same amount of batter in both of these pans. These cake layers are ready for the oven. We are ready to make some chocolate frosting, which if I'm being honest, is my favorite part of this cake. This is natural cocoa. It has a little bit more of a red color to it, and it's going to give the frosting a really nice milk chocolate flavor, something that's super family friendly. Kids love it too. I'm adding some confectioner sugar and some salt. Stir to combine. I'm now going to add some vanilla extract of the highest quality, our cold pressed vanilla extract. And now I'm adding some hot water. It's important that your water is hot at this stage because if you add just room temperature or cold water, this mixture, instead of forming a smooth paste, will turn kind of clumpy. The temperature of the water, too, when it's hot, it also blooms the cocoa. What that means is you get a really nice chocolatey flavor. The cocoa just kind of explodes. It becomes aromatic, and you get more chocolate flavor when you bloom it. So we're just going to mix this to combine. Scrape down the sides of the bowl. Make sure all of the dry ingredients are incorporated. Now you just add all of your confectioner sugar. Try to get it all in the bowl. But you'll probably get a little bit elsewhere. That's totally fine. Your butter should be unsalted because we added salt to the mixture and that allowed us to control the level of salt in the frosting. And it doesn't taste salty, it just tastes really delicious. It brings a nice balance of flavor. So we've got our ingredients all in here. Pro tip. Start your mixer on low speed, otherwise you are going to get a face full of confectioner sugar, which is funny but kind of annoying to clean up. <laughs> Once the butter and sugar are combined, it's time to give your mixer a little workout. You're going to turn it up to high and let it get really fluffy. It's going to lighten in color and volume and smooth out. You don't really need to sift your confectioner sugar or your cocoa unless they're really lumpy because this stage is going to beat any of those lumps out. Again, super easy frosting. That's it. This is the consistency of the frosting. It's really quite beautiful. It holds its shape nicely, which means we can pipe with it but it also is fluffy and it's evenly combined. It's got a gorgeous kind of milk chocolate hue to it. So our cakes are out of the oven and I'm going to show you just a few signs that you can check for to make sure that your cake is perfectly baked. So with vanilla or white cake layers, the first thing you can look for is a change in color. The top should be golden brown, not too dark, but not pale also. It should be this nice even color. Another sign you can look for is the cake should be pulling away from the sides of the pan when it reaches the end of baking. 
But you can also check with your finger, make sure your hands are clean, and just gently press on the center of the cake, and it should spring back. It should feel firm. If the dent kind of stays there, you know that the structure isn't fully baked, it's not set, and it needs a little bit more time in the oven. And then you can also use the classic toothpick or bamboo skewer test. You just want to test the center, insert it, and then pull back out. And it's okay if there's just a few crumbs clinging to it, but it should mostly come out clean. And if you look for all of those signs together, that will ensure that your cake is perfectly baked. You're going to let the cakes cool in their pans for about 15 minutes so that they're not too fragile when you start to handle them. Then you want to take a spatula or maybe a butter knife, not a sharp knife because you will maybe scratch the pan. So just run your spatula around the edge of the cake to loosen it. And then you can take a flat plate, another cooling rack or a cutting board, and you're going to invert it. And then just kind of flip it over like this and then remove the pan. And because we used both parchment and spray, it came out really easily. And now I'm going to remove the parchment. You should be able to just kind of peel it back. Perfect. And then I'll just flip it back over. And again, this is why you want the cake to be not really hot, but somewhat set. And then you can allow it to cool on the cooling rack completely. This next step is completely optional, but if you are shooting for birthday cake perfection, you can include this step. If you've ever seen a cake being cut in half horizontally, it's basically what we're going to do now, but we're only going to tape, take the very top layer of the cake off, almost as if the top were a skin, and that will prevent any sort of gummy layer from forming, because this top, sometimes when you put the frosting on it, it just turns a little bit of a wet texture. So we're shooting for perfection. We're gonna take just ever so small bit off the top Maybe if this is your first layer cake, you skip this step. So now our cake layers are leveled and trimmed. And so I'm just gonna kind of clean up my surface because at this point you don't want a lot of crumbs floating around. And then we will start assembling with our crumb coat. So the first thing you wanna do is get a little bit of frosting and just put a little dab in the center of whatever plate or turntable you're using to build your cake on to be your edible glue. It basically will hold your cake layers in place while you work. So just a little bit and then it will keep it secure so while you turn or move around the cake it's not going to shift. The other thing that you're going to do to prep your cake is use a little bit of scrap parchment paper or you know scrap thin box board and you want to put it underneath the edge of the cake, basically just to keep your plate clean so that as you're frosting, if you get a little bit of frosting drips or just kind of a messy border, the cleanup is super easy afterwards. You just have to remove the pieces of paper and voila, you have a clean border. Okay, we're ready to add frosting to the cake. This is really exciting. So my frosting is mixed, it's room temperature, I'm going to put a generous scoop in the middle. So don't worry too much about making this perfect. Just try to make it relatively level. You can check, just make sure you have no high spots or low spots. You want to turn the cake upside down so that you have a really flat, perfect surface for your top so that if you're going to write something on it or you know, decorate it, you get this really flawless looking top. So just center the cake as you put it on top. Make sure it looks level. If you have a high spot, you can kind of tap it gently and just kind of press it down. Now we're going to do what's known as the crumb coat, which is basically the first layer of frosting that holds all of the crumbs down and kind of locks them in so that when you do your final frosting, none of the crumbs come up. It's really helpful if you chill the cake at this point and it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. But if you don't have time or your cakes are relatively cool, you can just go for it. So let's start with the crumb coat. So you can start with 
a generous amount of frosting, but the whole point of the crumb coat is to use as little frosting as possible because you really just want enough to hold those crumbs in place. So I start with the top and then just kind of work the frosting towards the edges so that it goes over the sides. And then I'm going to start working with some of this excess frosting that has spread down the sides and just kind of push it down towards the base of the cake. It's okay if some of the cake peeks through at this step. So as you go, just kind of spread it evenly and then kind of scrape excess off. I'm gonna chill this for about 15 minutes and then I'll come back in with the final frosting, do some swoops, get some sprinkles, get some candles, and we'll finish this birthday cake. This is the penultimate step, the last step before the last step. We are going to finish our cake, and this is where your creativity gets to shine. You can decide if you want your cake to look kind of homey and rustic, or you want it to look more organized and very elegant. I'm going to go for the swoopy, rustic, delicious, I just can't wait to eat this birthday cake look. So I, again, like to start with the top. I scoop a generous amount of frosting onto the top, because even if it's a little bit too much for the top, it will overhang the sides and then you can use your spatula to kind of bring it down. And I'm going to use a similar motion that I used for the crumb coat, but now I'm just working with more frosting. If you find any chunks of cocoa powder or any sugar, you can try to just work them in with the tip of your spatula or you can just remove them. If there are some air bubbles in your frosting because you've whipped it up and it's so nice and fluffy, that's okay. We're gonna do some swoops to kind of take away from any imperfections. We also are going to decorate it with some sprinkles. So I like to start with a relatively smooth-ish surface before I do the swoops. So again, don't spend too much time making this perfect because you're just gonna make it swoopy. So using the back of the spoon, you're just going to make random swirls and just kind of make like peaks and valleys. So don't think about it too much, just kind of use the back of a spoon, make some S curves, do it randomly, and now I'll do the sides. Ooh. Once you've added some swoops, you can kind of stand back and see if there's any parts that need to be re-swooped. But really, just go with it, it's, it's swooping. Final touch on this birthday cake, I'm going to add some color. I love sprinkles, it just says happy birthday, but you can use any sort of decoration you want. You could use chocolate curls, you could chop up some chocolate, you could add your favorite sprinkles. I'm just gonna go for kind of like the shower of sprinkles. I just think this is really fun. It's very rewarding, it's literally like putting the cherry on top of the cake, but it's putting sprinkles on top of the cake. Now I can move it to the cake plate. And before I do that, I am going to just remove the parchment paper strips, which will give me a really nice clean edge. And we're going to transfer this to a plate that's easy to bring to whoever you're delivering your birthday cake to, or it can go in the fridge. For this step, moving your finished cake to the plate. Don't think about it too much. Get a trusty spatula. I like to use a big offset or even a giant spatula works really well. But just go in with confidence. So get your spatula underneath, take a deep breath, go with confidence, and center it on your plate. Our cake has been swooped. It has sprinkles on it. It is looking excellent. It is ready to present. Of course, this is birthday cake after all, so your final step should be adding some candles because nothing says birthday like candles on a birthday cake. Woohoo! So we have our classic birthday cake. It's got a hot milk sponge, it has chocolate frosting, swoops, it has sprinkles, it has candles. All that's left to do is now bring it to the lucky birthday person, and I guarantee there is going to be none left. Everyone's gonna love it. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> it was so good the first time. Bang! Happy birthday to you. Yes! <laughs> Let's just go. One, two, three.
I know, right? I know, you kind of have like...